Hello everyone, in this video we are going to prove the maximum minimum theorem, so let's get started. And please subscribe to make sure your maths teacher never gets mad at you. Statement Let i be a closed bounded interval and f is a continuous function from i to the set of real numbers. Then we prove that f has an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum on i. This statement has a few terms that I want to explain to you. First one is closed and bounded interval. So a closed bounded interval is an interval with its endpoints included in the interval and both of its endpoints are real numbers. The second one is absolute maximum and absolute minimum. Let A be a subset of real numbers and let F be a function defined from A to the set of real numbers. Then F has absolute maximum on A if there exists a point X superscript staric such that the image of x superscript staric is greater than or equal to the images of all the other points of a. Same goes for absolute minimum. A point x subscript staric that belongs to a is an absolute minimum of f if the image of x subscript staric is less than or equal to all the images of the elements of a. So the key point that would be useful for our proof is the absolute maximum and minimum points belong to the domain of the function. Unlike supremum or infimum that may or may not belong to the domain of the function. Now let's move towards the proof. First of all, consider the non-empty set f of i containing the images of the function f. Then by boundedness theorem, we obtain that f is bounded on i, which means f of i is a bounded set and as all bounded sets have their supremum and infimum, f of i also has its supremum and infimum. So let S with above star is a supremum of f of i and S with below star is infimum of f of i. One thing that needs to be clarified here is maximum and minimum must belong to the set whereas no such condition applies on supremum and infimum. So we basically need to prove that the supremum or infimum of f of i is also its absolute maximum or minimum respectively. Now s with above star is an upper bound of f of i but if 1 by n gets subtracted from it where n belongs to the set of natural numbers then s staric minus 1 by n doesn't remain the upper bound of the set f of i. Consequently there exists an element f of x n that lies between the supremum of f of i s staric and s staric minus 1 by n. To understand this, let's consider this is the set f of i on the number line and s staric is the yellow element extremely close to the set f of i on the right side. If 1 by n is subtracted from it, it gets inside the set f of i because s staric was sitting so close to the boundary of f of i. Now you can see that there must be some element f of x n laying between s staric minus 1 by n and s staric because f of i is the set of real numbers and real numbers are so tightly packed. I hope you will never forget this part of the proof ever again. Next, as we know that a bounded interval is a bounded sequence and since i is a bounded interval, so we can say that the sequence x n is also bounded. Now using bolzano weierstrass theorem which says that every bounded sequence in Rn has a convergent subsequence. So this implies that the sequence xn which is bounded also has a subsequence x dash and we call the elements of x dash as x and r because they are the elements of xn and this subsequence x dash converges to a number or element x superscript staric. You can also call this number x, it doesn't matter, but ultimately we will prove that this x staric is our absolute maximum. That's why we used this notation. Now using another theorem of limits, which states that if xn is a convergent sequence and xn lies in a closed interval, then its limit also lies in that closed interval. Since i is a closed 
interval and the elements of x dash which is a convergent sequence also belongs to i then by the theorem stated above we can say that the limit of x dash also belongs to i that is x taric belongs to i as we know that f is a continuous function on i and the limit x taric belongs to i so this means that f is also continuous on x taric because f is continuous on every single element of i so by applying the definition of continuity for real functions a function f is said to be continuous at a point x which belongs to the set of real numbers if whenever xn is a real sequence converging to x and the sequence f of xn also converges to f of x from this definition we can conclude that f of xn also converges to f of x superscript star and since we know that the limit of a sequence is always unique we can say that f of xn subscript r also converges to f of x superscript staric since f of xn lies between these two terms this implies that f of xn subscript r also follows the same principle next we apply the squeeze theorem on this inequality the squeeze theorem states that if three real sequences have an increasing relationship between them then their limit must be equal so this implies limit f of x and r is equal to s superscript staric but as we have already proved that the limit of f of x and r is equal to f of x staric so this implies that f of x staric is actually the supremum of f of i proving that x staric is an absolute maximum point of the function f on i the second part of the proof is extremely similar to this one so i'm not going to cover that but a hint that will help you take the function minus f of x instead of f of x and replace supremum by infimum and you're good to go and if you still have queries ask me in the comment section down below so that's it for the video i will see you guys all in my next one take care and goodbye